sorry, this was already a content-wise uh, intervention. This but... was already quite, quite content, but let's jump into it. I, I see we are all eager to um, go into the content of the presentations now. Almut, I know that you prepared for us uh, one or um, a couple of uh, short slides and you wanted to introduce us a bit more in depth uh, what you do. Would you like to share uh, the slides with us? Yes, uh, I'm happy to do so. Great. Uh, voilà. Okay. Does that work? Do you see my screen? It works and we can see. So, perfect. It's Very good. Table. Okay. Okay, I will jump in the middle of um, the the this uh, it was I called it a financing guide finally. Um <clears throat> I might need to say an introduction or remark um of course throwing money at the problem won't solve it <laughs> yeah and nevertheless i will focus here a bit on financing opportunities because um it is about making uh, energy renovations. I'm really focusing on renovations. Uh, you will see, so it's a bit different approach than the, the general, like uh, just uh, energy transition uh, by communities approach. Um, it's really focused on on renovations. Um, yeah, and it is about uh, like looking at how to make this a business case as well. Yeah, if you are talking about business models, somehow in the end of the day, uh, if you want to to have such a program running successfully, I mean. You, it has to be a business case as well. And this is why there is a, a, a certain focus now here on financing. But uh, when you look into um, like into the whole project, it goes much beyond the, the financing question. Um, nevertheless, I think through the, the lens of, of financing, we will address a couple of other questions as well. So what you see here in my slide is this distinction between basically three different levels. Uh, it is the, the level I start on the bottom, uh, it's basically homeowners. To make it simple, I'm, I'm calling this just homeowners. Could be tenants as well. In, in yeah, but it's actually mainly, of course, the home homeowners who has to take to the decision. Um, and you have the energy community. Um, however, you define that, it can be defined very broad. Uh, that is active at local or regional level. And then we have what I call here network associations. This is basically, uh, um, yeah, groupings like this side project as well somehow, um, who are somehow bringing together this uh, actual this local initiatives or regional initiatives. Um, what do they do? This is now here in this column. Homeowners, what they have to do is the renovation, of course, in itself. But we should never forget to to give uh, attention to the project development, uh, which uh, which is a is a key um, moment in the uh, renovation journey. The energy communities at the local or regional level, what they do is uh, providing a service, integrated home renovation service. This is now the term that is basically used by, by the European Commission, for instance, in the recent live calls that you have maybe seen on energy transition, um, uh, is, is, is this the term that is used. Um, sometimes you see this one-stop shop um, terminology that is used, it's basically always the same. So it's a program that is um, bringing together the, the needs of the home owners. And then we have what I call here support service. <clears throat> this is basically again what we are doing, what you are doing in Decide. This is what we are doing in uh, in the citizen-led renovation project, where you try to really scale up this type of activities to replicate, because it's in the end um, it's too slow if we just wait that this all happens on the ground by itself, little by little, because there is some interest in doing it anyhow. Uh, this all is about speeding up, accelerating the whole energy transition. And this is the reason why this support service um, level is very important. I ha have added a bit more distinction. When we are talking about homeowners, we have to distinguish vulnerable households that are a specific case. So we are talking here about the whole energy poverty uh, thematic and we have other. This is just the rest, like those who like middle class and upper class, of course, uh, people who do have um, the, the, the means to renovate their house. Um, when it comes to energy communities, I have distinguished two um, phases. One is the pilot phase where subsidies can should be used uh, and then there is a admit term 
um, this is the yeah this this big important question like how can you make such a service economically viable? That means even if the grant subsidies are not anymore uh, there, can you still keep doing your activity? So <clears throat> now I distinguished. These are now the different types of um, uh, financing opportunities or, or, or yeah sources that you can use. Uh, I have introduced here a color code. The blue ones is public money and the uh, pink ones is private money. This is quite important to, to understand because we have now an opportunity over the next years. Um, we have the, uh, in the EU budget, we have quite important amounts of money that can be used, public money that can be used uh, for uh, this type of activities for the energy transition. But we know this money is not enough for all the investment that is actually needed. And this is why it is very important to also look into the private money in the whole system and to see how this can be combined, the public and the private money. That's why this color code is quite important. So what you see for this, um, now I start from the top, uh, for the support service, it's basically grants that you need because uh, I didn't identify any other means how you can finance such a support service uh, if it's not really a grant that you get because it's not an investment where you get any type of return. Um, when it comes to this renovation service uh, provided by the communities, it's again grants, especially in the pilot phase. Um, then you have money for project development, then you have the possibility to use rewards. This is a very important um, thing, um, maybe not as obvious as it is on the supply side. On the supply side, you, you can sell your energy that you produce, which is a very clear um, uh, income. But on the demand side, when you want to reduce to energy demand, then you have to somehow sell your savings. So this is what I call uh, the rewards. And you have, of course, own resources as well that you can use uh, for this. Um, Mid-term, it's the same, just the difference is that the grants are disappearing. Homeowner sites, you have again rewards like certificates and you have grants and that's especially the case for vulnerable households because here again it's about uh, uh, reducing energy poverty. And for others, I have added own resources and loans to that. Now a couple of details that come in. Like just to make you aware, these grants, they can come from EU level or from national level. And uh, here um, in the publication, by the way, you find here the source. Huh? In my publication, I have detailed um, like the, the diff different um, potential sources for these grants. So I'm not going into details here, um, but just to tell you, it can be EU money or national money. When we talk about project development, there is the facility, the Yel Elena facility from the European Investment Bank that you might be aware uh, that it exists, which is an important uh, source. And <clears throat> when it comes to these grants, I have put here TA uh, is technical assistance. And uh, the, the problem sometimes is really to design these schemes, these grant schemes. And the EU has uh, um, the possibility to to finance technical assistance for member states, member states that are less experienced, and not only at national level but also at regional level, technical assistance is available to design this type of grants. Um, yeah, then I go even further. I, I'm doing that a bit on purpose to show you how like. Uh, multiple these elements and these financing tools are and normally people get a bit confused about all this but I think it is very important to have an overview of, of all these different tools and and pots and um, yeah things and to really dive into it and try to understand all the opportunities you have that's why I try to give this overview uh, to show you so I put here the ETS revenue recycling because this is another very important source um, for financing uh, for this for the energy transition it's already now 50 percent of ETS revenues that uh, have to be used for um, climate purposes and in the future this will even be more if the, the fit for 55 package gets adopted more or less the way how the commission is proposing it and there is this uh, social uh, climate fund as well that has targeted um, uh, means and this is money that is not inside the budgets, not in the national budgets, but and it's very steady revenues. Therefore, very important uh, money. 